this is Sugru. It's a new material for fixing things and for making things work better. It starts off like Play-Doh and it turns into a tough, durable silicone overnight. For the last nine years, I've been pretty much obsessed by this material and I invented it to help get the world fixing again. Why? Why should we care about fixing stuff? What does it matter if my fridge breaks or my sandals or my phone charger and I just throw it out and go off and get a new one? These are the tiny mundane details in our lives that we never normally talk about, probably even think about. I'm very proud that um, Sugru has been embraced by loads of amazing people around the world. Fixers, makers, DIYers engineers and doers of all sorts. And they use Sugru to fix things and to make things, and they inspire other people to do the same. You'll be very happy to know that Buzz Lightyear's leg is back in working order. The keys on this saxophone are now exactly the right height for the, its player's fingers. This uh, rusty tractor steering wheel is no longer a hazard. And the owner of this wheelchair can now tell the time easily when she's out and about. Why do these people fix things? At the start, I thought that they would be, were motivated by um, helping the environment or saving money, you know, like reducing waste and all that sort of thing. And while that's definitely a factor, and it's definitely there in the background somewhere, there's actually, I know now, something much bigger going on. And over the last while, I've, be I've been very lucky to become immersed in the world of these people. Right in the moments when they're doing their projects, in those heady moments where they've just had an idea or where they've just completed a successful fix. You might think I'm exaggerating about that heady moment. Um, I mean, how exciting can it be to rebuild a missing button on your electric toothbrush? But anyone who's ever repaired something will be able to tell you that that's how it is. It's thrilling. Um, you get this amazing feeling of achievement um, and of beating the system a little bit and of potential to do more. I mean, there's really big problems in the world, and so you might ask, why, why should we be thinking about these small little things, these little mundane details? Shouldn't these fixers and makers be focusing on the big problems? Well, the fact is, that they are. Um, a lot of the fixers that I know are engineers, scientists, designers, entrepreneurs, writers, teachers, and they are working on the big stuff. Um, but they're approaching it in the same way that they do the small things, in a curious, open, um, and creative, and most of all, I think, practical way. And my hunch is that they probably were approaching problem solving in their own lives, like first, um, and then they started to take on the bigger stuff. So my question is, can any of us become fixers and hands-on problem solvers? Or is it just something for DIYers and people that call themselves fixers already? Or can any of us do this? One amazing story that um, has come from the Subaru community that really stands out from all the rest is one from a guy called Stefan whose three-year-old is really into taking photographs. And now he wanted to encourage him, but obviously it's quite risky to just hand over the camera. But he looked at cam buying a camera for, um, for him, but the cameras for, chil for children are actually take really bad photos. Um, apparently they think three-year-olds won't notice. Um, so one Saturday he sat down with his Sugru and uh, camera, and he built these really cleverly shaped walls all over the camera so that the little hands could hold it better, and that when it did drop, instead of breaking, it bounced. So this is a really cute project. It's really cool, right? But who cares? Um, well, someone clever said, we form the objects around us, but remember that they also form us. Think about how we normally approach and behave around gadgets. This is a sealed silver shiny box with a lovely brushed aluminium finish and a glass screen that we try not to scratch. It's expensive and delicate 
and we keep it in a protective case up out of the reach of children. Um, in doing what he did, Stefan completely changed that. He took full ownership over that camera and he took charge of how he and his kid were going to behave around it. And he skillfully manipulated it to do what he wanted it to do. He helped his kid to have fun taking photos um, and to learn that if a tool doesn't work for you, you can make it work for you. In one weekend, he invented a solution and shared it. And it's an awesome solution that lots of other parents have copied since. He's an amazing hands-on problem solver. I find it really inspiring. Um, but in terms of my question, can any of us become fixers and can any of us think like this? There's a small problem with this project. And that problem is that in his day job, Stefan is a designer. Can any of us be as free with our stuff as he is? Joanne is from Canada um, and she loves canoeing. She wanted to take part in an epic ultramarathon race. It's 700 kilometers long and up the Yukon River. And she's super fit, she's a really good canoeist, um, but there's only one problem, that she doesn't have any fingers on her left hand. She got a friend to help her drill a screw into her paddle, and then she formed some sugaru around it in just the right shape so she could get a good grip, good comfortable grip on it. And she sent us some pictures and this story a few weeks ago to tell us that her team and her had just completed this race in three days and three nights of continuous paddling um, with no sleep. And she said that she couldn't have done the race if she hadn't modified her paddle, um, which is a pretty amazing story. Um, And Joanne would never consider, consider herself a DIYer or a fixer, but she did this awesome solution. Um, but in terms of my question, can anyone become a fixer? In a way, this, this solution has a problem too, because she had such a strong need. You know, she really wanted to do this thing, and she had to find a solution to do it. So I don't know if we can approach our everyday stuff where we don't have as much motivation in the same way, with the same spirit and can-do approach that she did. My next example is a bit of a surprise for me. Um, we've been working with a manufacturer of Olympic fencing equipment to design a customizable fencing grip. And the idea is that this product will come in two parts. So it comes in a metal part and a Subaru part. Um, and the metal part has these hollowed out areas. And the idea is that the athlete, um, when they get, get their handle, they form the sugar in those hollowed areas so that it fits their hand um, the way they want it. This is James Davis. He's uh, the youngest member of the British Olympic fencing team. He's one of the first athletes that's been trying out these prototypes. Um, and first of all, he, he used it and he customized it for, for his hand. But then something else happened. This is a bit subtle, so go back and think about how Stefan was with, his, with the camera. Um, it's about how he's behaving with his equipment. After he formed it for his hand, he very quickly started to form shapes on the handle that would help him. So the first thing he did was he built up the middle section um, so that his thumb was in a more relaxed position. And then he started to form a ridge so that he could actually get a stronger flick. What was happening there is that he started to behave like, without, without any prompting, he started to behave like a, a really good product designer. Someone that would never call himself a fixer or a maker of any kind was now designing and making his equipment. And I think that's very exciting. Um, but in terms of my question, um, you know, the, the amazing thing is that he leapfrogged from being, um, you know, not having any sort of making experience to completely manipulating his stuff. But in terms of the question, can anyone become a fixer? I mean, this has a very specific, um, has a very specific requirement and a very sp specific situation. So I don't know actually um, how this can transfer into our everyday stuff. But maybe like Joanne, um, he'll start to see 
um, the, rest, the stuff in the rest of his life. Because when Joanne fixed her paddle, what happened was she sent us emails and she was like, I'm now fixing everything in my life now that I've done this. Um, so I wonder, will, will James be the same? And now that he's done his fencing grip, will he start to see the other stuff in his life differently? Could it be that it takes just one successful fix to turn somebody into a fixer? I'd like to leave you with a challenge. Um, and what I'd like to do is ask you all to fix something. And remember that fixing isn't just about broken stuff. It's about problem solving. Um, and often we actually um, stop noticing problems because we become so used to them, we, we just don't notice them anymore. So the first step is in observing and noticing a problem. Jason's outside tap was really stiff, and every time he used it, it would dig into his hand. So he changed the shape of it so that he can get more leverage, and it's a little bit warmer um, in the winter too. James used to have to slow down every time that he wanted to ring his bike bell. He'd have to slow down because he had to lift his hand and ring it. He moved the bell over onto his brake lever, so he just has to move his thumb, and he doesn't have to slow down. Mike watched his granny um, struggling to drink out of a normal glass because the straw kept moving around. And this took two goes for him to get the design, the shape of this little clip right. So he tried the blue one first and then the yellow one. But now she can drink and it doesn't move around at all. So I challenge you, in the next few weeks, find a problem. Find a small problem, the smaller the better, and fix one thing.